I'm going to show you how you can set up NIC teaming on Windows Server. So to start, I'm logged onto my Windows Server that I want to set the teaming up for. And then if we come into Server Manager and then Local Server, we can see that NIC teaming is currently disabled and we've got two network cards attached to our server. Both of these network cards have DHCP addresses and don't have any static information in them as this config will be wiped out when we set up NIC teaming. So within Server Manager, if we press NIC teaming, this will bring us up to our configuration page. And then we can see we've currently got no teams and we've got two interfaces that can be added to a team. All we need to do is right click one of the interfaces and press add to new team. And then we can give our NIC team a name. I will just call this NIC team one. And then I will select the network cards that I want to add to the team. And then under additional properties, I will click the drop down. And then this is where we can configure some additional options. So by default, whatever settings are here will most likely be fine. However, there are a couple of things we can change. As I'm doing this in a virtual machine, I can't actually change these first two modes. However, switch independent is the default, which means that you don't have to do any configuration on the switches and it will just work by configuring it within Windows Server. You do also have the option for static teaming and LACP but both of these require configuration on the switch and the actual switches need to be able to support the link aggregation control protocol. So if your switch supports the link aggregation control protocol, you can change it to either static teaming or the link aggregation protocol. For load balancing, you've got a couple of options. You've got address hash, Hyper-V port or dynamic. As this is a virtual machine, it's defaulted to address hash, but you would either really want to use address hash or dynamic or if it's on a Hyper-V switch, you can use the Hyper-V port. You can also configure a standby adapter. So by default, when you select none, all of the network cards are active. However, if you select a standby adapter, what it will do is it will just send all of the traffic over the other ports and it will leave the one you've selected in standby so it's not used and that will only come active when there is a failure of some sort. I'm going to select none and leave all of the adapters as active. And then if you wanted, you can also click the team interface and you can also set a VLAN if you want to put the specific NIC on a VLAN. I'm just going to leave this at default and then press OK to create the team. Now that the team's created, it will say faulty connection pending. This will take about 15 to 20 seconds for it to just initialize and then it should both go to active. Now these are both saying active, our NIC team is set up and it is working. So what we can do is if we come back to our network interface, we can see that we've got our two network adapters still, and we've also got our NIC team one that we have created. If we come into any of our old adapters and come to the properties, we can see that everything has been disabled other than the Microsoft network adapter multiplexer protocol. And then none of the configuration can be done from within these NICs directly as everything's been disabled. So if we want to, for instance, set a static IP address for the NIC team, we can come into the NIC team and then configure it how we normally would and then set a static IPv4 or IPv6 address. But I'm just going to leave these as DHCP for the time being. So we've got our so we've got our network cards and then we've got our NIC team, which combines both of the network cards together. You can also see that the speed of the NIC team. So this is just a combination of all of the speeds that are through the adapters. So I've got a one gig adapter and an adapter that's running at 702 meg. So I've got a 1.7 gig link speed. Now, if we come back to our NIC teaming, what I'm going to do as an example, I'm just going to force a failure on one of these cards. So if I start a continuous ping, and then if I disable one of the network adapters, what we should see is that it goes to a faulted state and our ping continues and the network connection doesn't drop. So we can see that our NIC teaming is working. And then when I reinitialize the connection or the network adapter comes back online, what should happen is that this will automatically pick itself up and then go from a faulty connection pending. It will identify the network connection and then bring it back online and then ramp up the speed back to the full speed of the network interface. And there we go, that is back online and both of our network cards are active in our NIC team. Now, if you need to make any amendments to the NIC team, 
On the left hand side, you can just right click and come to properties. And then you can modify any of the additional properties as well as add or remove network cards within the team. If you want to remove the NIC team, you can just right click and delete. And that will remove the network adapters from out of the team and put them back as standalone network adapters that are connected to the server. So that is how you can set up NIC teaming on Windows Server.